if you don't mind, we're going to go back to basics. So let's start with uh, terminology, first of all. So we, you mentioned one of the things there, spodumene. There's also um, a hydroxide and carbonate. So maybe you can describe what each of those things is. Okay, sure. Uh, just one other thing, you know, to point out is, is that people must understand is that the lithium industry didn't start and evolve. It's been going since the 50s yep. in the States. It didn't start with the basis of supplying electric vehicles. Lithium started out, you know, as an example, and one of the places that you can, you know, uh, produce lithium is in the, you know, out of brine, in the South American brines, uh, is it was a byproduct of the potassium industry. So one of the things that people need to understand, and it's something that we'll discuss as we, we move forward from here, is the quality of lithium that is required to supply the industrial market, which is the history of lithium, which is grease, glass, ceramics, etc., is not the same as what is required in the battery industry. The, the purity levels are, are, are completely separate products. So when people think of, of lithium as a commodity, it, it, it might have some merit in looking at it in that shape and form for the historical industrial applications. But for the battery industry, it's very much a specialty chemical. Beautiful. So in fact, that's really important to understand. So there, there, it's been around a long time. I appreciate that. And there are other uses which you know probably make up the bulk of the, the market at the moment. But investors are getting excited for companies based on what they're hearing around the battery, uh, the, the, the battery thematic, the EV thematic, what, what automotives are going to be doing going forward. I appreciate there are these, and, and we'll, we'll cover off all of the above for sure. So, so, so Matt, the, the, the historic applications are much, very much GDP growth related industries. Yes, you know, they, so they, they are linked to industrial applications and they're GDP related. The excitement is around the lithium ion battery industry, which is going to compound at quarter 25, 30%. And that's unprecedented. So when people say lithium is abundant, lithium is abundant. So is nickel, so are other things. But can you commercially extract it and can you produce the product that's needed? And it's one of the stumbling blocks in investors' you know, mentality looking at it is they don't, they don't uh, look at the, they don't consider the nuance of what it is to produce a product that has sometimes 10 parts per million of you need impurities at less than 10 parts per million of a product. It, it really requires, you know, a specialty process. And that's where the margins are at and that's the excitement. So if we, we go back now to, to what you mentioned. So, the, you know, the, the lithium started out in the US. It was based on hard rock. So it was a mostly spodumene based material. You process that into... Um, into uh, lithium chemicals. Then in the 80s, uh, the brine opportunity arose in South America and the US pretty much shut down and, and it went to, um, it went to uh, South America and then back again, green bushes in Western Australia, you saw the rise of, of hard rock mining again. So from a brine perspective, the sun and the wind does a lot of the uh, processing for you. It upgrades the, the the content, the lithium content in the brine, so without having to do anything. So from a carbon footprint perspective, brine is actually quite low. But you need, uh, I think, uh, I don't want to quote it, but um, you need an enormous amount of land footprint to have ponds as you, you know, pump it up and then move them from one to the other, increasing the grade. And the issue that's always uh, raised, and it's been raised now again in Chile, is what is the impact on the local, the sustainability and the local, and the impact on the local community and flora and fauna pumping brine out from under the surface. But um, typically a, a brine will be processed into lithium carbonate as it's, you can do chloride as well, but it's just, so from a, from a battery perspective, which is really where we're focusing this conversation, 
is you make a lithium carbonate. You can reprocess that into hydroxide, but it's an initial step and then a secondary step. The other way to make lithium is hard rock, spodium and concentrate. You dip, dig up lithium oxide. It's mostly in Oz, but there's other places, Brazil, etc. And you purify, you it, it increase the grade of that to a 6% spodium and concentrate. And you ship that. It's pretty much exclusively done in China, where you need 7.5 to 8 tons of spodium and concentrate to then put through a rotary kiln, sulfuric acid, etc., and produce you can produce carbonate, but it, that is the is the preferred route for lithium hydroxide. Okay.